Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is where you are, and welcome back to part three of the Egg to Bird series. In today's episode, we have reached day number 18, and we are going to be looking at humidity, for starters, and then we're going to place the eggs into lockdown. Now, the reason why we're looking at humidity is because it is one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time. Um, as you might have worked out from my accent, from the other videos we've done in the past, I come from the UK. I live in the UK, I work in the UK, I hatch eggs in the UK. I will then get some random person who's called Roast Potato 74, for example, I don't know, that's just a made up thing, who will say in the comments, how much water do I put in my incubator? And I just look at that and I just think, how on earth do I know? I've got no idea whatsoever. So let's explain humidity, sort of. This is a bit of a schoolboy thing. I'm not going to go into great depth. I'm not going to go into great detail. If anybody who knows a lot about humidity wants to leave a nice big long little comment down below, please do so. Um, because every day is a school day, even I learn stuff. So, with chicken eggs, ideally, over the course of zero to day 18, we want the humidity to be somewhere between 35% to 50%-ish, okay? Along that, over the course of the days, from day 18 when you put them into lockdown which is what we're just about to do to 21 which is when they should hatch you want it to come up a bit to maybe 70 to 80 ish percent okay so I'm being exacting so but what we don't want and what we're not going to get right okay so if we say we have got let's say 50% 35 humidity All right and this is our thing over the days what is not going to happen is we are not going to end up with a line which goes exactly across as we keep our humidity dead on exactly perfect not going to happen what is going to happen over the course of the days if we check our humidity if we've got a really really accurate hygrometer is it will go like that or it might go in a different way or whatever but it's not going to be exactly the same it's going to fluctuate and what you're looking for over the course of the 18 days is that the average happens what you do not want absolutely do not want is for it to go along like this and then just to go like that okay you do not want that to happen you do not want really really high peaks and you do not want really really low peaks now, what Brincy recommend, if you read Brincy instructions, um, they are actually, they do actually go into a lot of detail, is they actually recommend to weigh the eggs, because it's a lot more accurate way of working out if your humidity is right or if it's wrong. That's fine if you've got a little incubator and you've got lots of time on your hands. Lots of people at the moment have got lots of time on their hands, but this video might be watched in three years' time and everybody will be like, coronavirus? What was that then? But... When you haven't got lots of time around, you have to work out. So, going back to my comment at the start about Mr. Baked Potato, who asked me how much to put in. So, I live in the UK, as I've already said. The background humidity here, at most times of the year, other than maybe July and August, when it gets really, really roasting hot, if you're really, really lucky, um, is roughly 40%. So, what I do is I do what's called dry hatching. I don't put any water in at the start. I leave them dry for the 18 days because there's absolutely zero point. If I put water in, it's just going to raise the humidity up higher than what the background is when the background humidity is enough humidity to hatch the chicks. In the last few days, I add water in because it needs that little bit of a boost to do it. So when I get asked by Mr. Baked Potato how much do they need to put in, I've got no idea. They might be living in sub-Sahara Africa, 
where the air is really, really dry and they need to add water every other day to keep that humidity up. They might be living just outside of Cairns in Australia where they've got the rainforest where it's mega high humidity and again they wouldn't need to do anything. So it's one of those questions that I can't actually answer. It's up to you personally to go out and to do it yourself and work it out yourself what you need to do. I can't help you with that unfortunately. But if you're in the UK, nine times out of ten you don't need to add water for the first 18 days, you just do dry hatching. I'm sure that applies to large parts of the States, uh, New Zealand, um, maybe Southern Australia, Melbourne sort of area around there. But yeah, you just don't need to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the incubators into here because uh, I'm in my kitchen again. As you can see, I've had to put uh, cheap Pringles in the way because my, because my camera's actually on charge. Uh, we're going to bring the incubators into here. We're going to recandle the eggs again because we want to make sure that we're not putting uh, any manky ones into lockdown. And then we're going to put them into lockdown and I'll explain everything as we go along as, we, as we're doing all the way through this series. Right, so let's go and get these incubators. Okay, so we've brought the incubators in and we're just about to start to candle the eggs um, to see which ones we're going to keep and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be all of them. So as you can see, again, um, I've turned the incubators off for this process. There's no need to have them turned on. Exactly the same as I said last time in that you don't need to rush, but you don't want to hang around either. You just want to get in, get it done and get them back to where they were. Now, when they go back, we need to make sure two things. One, well, three things actually. Let's go for three things. I'm sure there's going to be a fourth thing that's going to pop up into my head at some point. I said, oh yeah, it should be four, but no. Three things, okay? One, we are going to make sure that the turners are not engaged. With this one, it's not a problem. It's a manual one. I'll stop turning it. I'm turning it four, three, four times a day. This one is an automatic one, so I will make sure that the turner is not engaged in it. Number two, we need to make sure that we remove all of the dividers. All of the dividing rods that go across, we're going to get rid of those. Reason being that then allows the eggs to move around and to get to places. And number three, we need to make sure that we add some water to them. I'll bring you back on the water because that can be quite an important one. So I'm going to start off with this one here. I'm going to candle all of the eggs. Um, again, like last time, if I pick up anything that looks really, really good, I'll film it. Otherwise, I'm not going to film everything because you don't need to see everything. I will show you the first couple, but after that, there's no need because they all look pretty much the same, unless I see something that's really, really spectacular. Okay, so let's crack on with the candling. Okay, so looking at that one, sorry, that's the sound of another incubator going in the background. It looks as if that one might have stopped developing at some point. So there is nothing in that one, unfortunately. Okay, so this one here, you can see I've turned it on. But you can see also that it's all very, very dark. Let me try and get my hands out of the way. Let's get it so it can focus in. You can see there's a big air sac at the bottom there but you then really can't see very much more. Hopefully you can see there's a big air sac, but then you can't see very much more. That's because that other space, oh, did you see that flicker of movement in the top bit there? I'm trying to get it so as you can see it. There's a flicker of little movement. All that is is just a little chicken there. It's uh, jiggling about. He's having a party. See that one there again? You can't see nothing in there. Right, let's turn it around. See if we see something that moves. That one there, I'm not 100% sure on because it's not filling up all the space. Let's see if we see a little bit of movement. Might just be the way how it's laid inside the egg. It does happen. I'm not 100% on that one, so we'll put it in and we'll see. Actually, I might mark it that I'm not 100%. There we go. So these eggs are looking really nice and healthy. what we want to see. Okay, I'm going to leave it there unless I see anything really spectacular and then I'll be back. OK, 
Okay, just bringing you back in. Just want to show you this one. This is, uh, I just opened up the Janal, um, and you can see this egg here. Hold on, I really need to change this switch for a permanent on-off switch. And you can see that something has started. It obviously started to grow, but then for whatever reason, it then hasn't developed further. And again, this happens, it can just be like a natural thing that just happens. So for whatever reason, that egg decided not to develop further, and it hasn't. So that would just be chucked away. I just thought I'd show you that because that can be one of the ones. See that one there looks the same as well. And dear, don't say this incubator has had an issue. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep going, looking through these. Mm. Okay. Ah, there we go. Whew. <laughs> Just when you think all of your, so you can see some movements, a little bit of movement in there, please. Yep, there we go, a little bit of movement. Whoa, cool, blimey, I was getting a bit concerned then. There we go. Right, I'm going to get back to candling these, and fingers crossed, they'll all be all right, and it will just be the couple ones that were on the end there that caused us a little bit of a. A little bit of a heart stopper there. Okay, so I've candled everything now, and in total, I've removed five eggs because, for one reason or another, they didn't grow, they didn't develop, or they started and then they stopped. Now, it's a bit hard for me to explain, but there is the voice of experience. I've done this many times before and I don't like these incubators. They're okay, they work, obviously they work because we've got stuff in there. However, what's in there looks as if it's about a day behind what is in the Brimsey one. Now I deliberately haven't placed another thermometer in here on purpose but that's because I'm doing a review on this incubator as well. Plus the other thing is a couple of them it does look as if the as if the chick has really developed over one side as, as if yeah over one side now although it is in on the sliding tray and the sliding tray constantly turns it might have been that one of the eggs got a bit stuck at one point and it wasn't actually turning obviously we don't open these to constantly check them and see what's happening so that might have happened so it'd be interesting now to see out of the three six nine 11, 14, 16 that are left, what actually happens with them. And we've got eight left in um, the Octagon 10 as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water to them and we're gonna place them down. So if I show you, first of all, with the Octagon 10, we have removed the middle divider and the eggs have just been placed in there now. So. See, I'm trying to hold it as still as I can, but you can see that one of the eggs is moving. This one here. I don't know if the camera picked it up. Um, but that does happen. So the chicks are going to move around. They're going to want to move around to get ready to actually hatch out. So, um, yeah, so we've removed the divider. They'll now go in there. These end bits here, I'm just about to put some water into. But when I do them, I will do this one here at the same time. With this one here, what I'm going to do is slightly different. I'm actually going to carry it to where we, to where we are going to place it down. It's in, in exactly the same place as you saw in the last video. Place it down there. Then once it is placed down, I will lift up and I will remove the cradle. I don't want to remove the cradle before I put it where it's going to be because if I do, the eggs are going to roll around, break as they smash into each other. So let me go and sort out the water and I'll explain the water to you to help to bring up the humidity in the last few days. Yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do is with the, um, the Brinsey, I'm gonna fill the two bits at the end here with water. And all I'm gonna use to do it is just one of these little bottles that's got a hole in the top. I have just filled it now with water, water from the tap. You do not want to use water from your cold tap. Um, ideally use it from your hot tap 
but not when it's really really hot, when it's just about lukewarm. So it's a little bit above room temperature, but it's not hot hot hot, it's just that nice, as my gran used to call it, lukewarm. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill these up. Let's see if I can bring them in so you can see what I'm doing. And that's the other. So now I've just got to be very, very careful as I take it back through. So, the reason why we call it lockdown is because it is essentially now locked down. That is it. I will take that back, I will plug it in, and I will not open it, I will not touch it, I will not interfere with it, I will not do anything whatsoever at all with it until I'm confident that all the chicks that are going to hatch have hatched. With this one here, what I will do is I will put water into one of these little glasses and I will just leave it inside of it like that. These have got a nice little tray just on the bottom there um, so that any nasty stuff hopefully would fall through and that anything else would just stay on top but the chicks are able to run around on the top of that. Let's see. So yeah, I'll go and get these set up uh, where they're going to go and then I'll bring you back and we'll end the video. Okay, so like we said, that is it now. They are in lockdown. Uh, you do not need to touch them, you do not need to turn them, you do not need to move them, you do not open them. Uh, you just leave them be. I will do another video when it comes to the hatching and I will explain why we don't open them, why that can be really, really bad and why it can actually kill quite a few of your eggs off. And when is the good time to open them? That's coming up in the next video. Hopefully, fingers crossed, as long as these guys here start hatching. So. Thanks for watching, please like, please comment, please subscribe, leave us any notes down below, ask us any questions, but please do not be called Mr. Peg Potato and ask me how much humidity, how much water you need to put into your incubator, because I don't know. Until the next one, bye bye.